What's up, YouTube world? Uh, me and Chris are here at the house. We are about to head out to go for a little hike. Uh, Chris has his leggings on. Typical hiking attire for him. Very pretty. Oh, geez, look at the butt on that. Yeah. He must work out. Uh, we wanted to touch base with you guys about what's going on today with all of us. Uh, we got Rain, Alice, and Fila grinding on our PP Poker app, and they are planning on playing that all evening, while me, Chris, and Jack are going to head out to play a 2-5 home game in Dallas. I think this will be the first uh, home game action that we've put on the vlog, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. first home game action on the vlog, so we'll try and get some actual footage at the table for you guys and review a couple of hands afterwards. Uh, I wanted to talk briefly uh, about some of the differences between playing at the casino, which is where we spend most of our time, and playing in home games, because we get quite a few questions about it. Uh, I would say for me, uh, the biggest difference is the casino. Uh, the big pro there is that the games are super accessible. You can play 24 hours a day. Uh, if it's 3 a.m. and my schedule's all wacky, but I feel like playing, I can just take off and go put in a session just as long as I want to. Uh, the 2-5 is always good, and there's always a game running. Uh, of course, transactions being more secure is also a benefit. When you're at the casino, you're never really worried about um, you know, getting mugged whenever you're going to the cashier cage, uh, or the, the host not being able to pay out if you win big. Uh, whereas at home games, you hear about things like that happening. It has never happened to me personally, but of course it's still in the back of your mind whenever you roll up to a home game and you're carrying 5,000 in cash on you. Uh, you know, this isn't uh, necessarily the safest environment to be in, but sometimes it's worth the risk uh, if you know the club owner or the host of the home game and you're familiar with a lot of the players, then it can usually be worth it. I would say the biggest downside to the home game scene is the rake. And the decision was made that it's good. It is good. Uh, there's usually much higher rake in the home games, which they justify by saying they provide massage girls and much better food than the casino and free drinks and uh, the atmosphere is a lot better which makes up for the rake somewhat. Uh, I usually enjoy myself more at the home game, it's more of a friendly environment, uh, less grinders. Yeah, so the home games usually just provide a more gambling atmosphere. Uh, there's players that will bust a couple of stacks, go on tilt, and then buy them for 5000 and a 2-5 and now all of a sudden you're playing deep with a chance to win you know, quite a lot of money, uh, which is something that you don't really get at the casino too often. Uh, there's a 500 cap on the 2.5 at Windstar, so usually the stacks uh, stay around like 1,500 to 2K at the deepest. You know, in a home game, sometimes you're starting out that deep, even in the same 2.5 structure. Uh, so, anyway, those are some of the biggest differences for us. Uh, we usually end up leaning towards the casino unless we know the host of the game, uh, of the home game personally, which doesn't happen that often. Uh, we've had a couple of friends in the past run home games that we've gone to pretty regularly. But right now, this one that we're going to tonight uh, just opened up and it is the only host in the area that we know that is currently running a game. Uh, so we're gonna go check it out, uh, help them get their game going a little bit. Hopefully they'll be running two tables because me and Jack and Chris are planning on playing and we generally avoid trying to play on the same table with each other. So anyway, we will update when we get there and let you guys know how it goes. Hopefully run up some of those deep home game stacks tonight. Good luck us. Good luck us. Me 
and Jack are out here in the beautiful wilderness of Waco, Texas. Uh, we are playing some disc golf today. I decided to come down to Waco for the weekend so me and Jack can do a little studying. We're gonna play some online and maybe go to the legal room down here. Uh, we drove in from Dallas last night where we were at a 125 home game. Uh, There's quite a bit of straddling on uh, and the stacks were really between about 500 and 1,000, making the game play fairly shallow and pretty gambly. At this point of the night, it's pretty late. We've been playing for five or six hours, and uh, it's been a very swingy session. Uh, Under the Gun, who is a very loose player, he's really just there to gamble. I don't think he's there to try and win. Uh, he opens to 25. Under the Gun plus one, who is a short stack, he's got about 260 left. Uh, decides to make the call and we are directly behind them and look down at pocket aces we three bet to 100 and both of them call so we go three ways to a flop and the pot's about 300 the flop comes down ace four three all diamonds so we flop top set uh, and already can imagine that we're probably gonna get in a pretty gambly spot here if uh, under the gun is sticking it in with any diamond which I presume he probably is uh, it checks to me, and I decide to continue for 150, about half pot. Uh, the first player under the gun check calls, and then the second player, who is the short stack, uh, shoves. And of course, both me and under the gun make the call because the action's closed, so we can't uh, we can't raise. Uh, we go to a turn, and the five of hearts peels off. Brings a one liner. It is possible that our under the gun player could have a deuce. But of course, we're not going anywhere here with top set and definitely the potential for him to be putting it in with the case ace, uh, probably just any reasonably sized diamond, maybe the jack of diamonds plus. Uh, we're definitely not getting away from this. Uh, he's only got about 290 left. He checks to us and we go ahead and stick it in. It's a little less than half the pot and he snap calls. Uh, so I think maybe he's already got a made flush. Maybe he's got a deuce. I'm not sure, but I mean, we've got outs against both of those hands, uh, so we're hoping for a good river card. Uh, the river peels off the seven of clubs. All three of us are all in, and we're going to showdown. Uh, we flip over two aces and pray that it's good. Uh, the middle, pos or the under the gun plus one guy, who was the short stack, flips over king eight with the king of diamonds, so he whiffed. And uh, our under the gun player, unfortunately, flips over six four offsuit six of hearts four of clubs so he flopped middle pair after opening under the gun and then calling a three bet decides to check call for 150 and then turns the the open ender to go with his pair and sticks it in and uh, goes perfect perfect on us and five seven is what he needed five seven is what he gets and he scoops the $1,400 pot off of us, so no fun. Uh, we had to reload after that, which I think we got some fun footage of, so. Checks. checks. Just played a seven hour home game tonight. Um, it was a one, two, five. Nick, Jack, and me were all here. And I invited one of our Instagram fans um, who is also becoming a friend of ours. His Instagram name is Ganger God, and his, uh, his first name is Paul. What's up, Paul? What's going on, guys? Um, we played a pretty interesting hand tonight, uh, and we're gonna tell you that hand right now. I'm actually gonna turn the camera around and let Paul tell you guys. Okay, so we're starting at 125, and Nick's under the gun. He makes it 20. Uh, Chris is in middle position. He calls. I'm next to act in the low jack with 8-7 of hearts, so I go ahead and make the call as well. Um, two more players go ahead and make the call. So we're going five ways of the flop for $100. And the flop comes A6-4 with the six four of hearts. So we flop a gut shot straight flush draw. Uh, Nick goes ahead and C bets for 60. 
Chris makes the call. And then at this point, I go ahead and decide to raise. So I go ahead and make it 220. Folds around to Nick, who goes in the tank for a long time, and then ends up folding uh, some big ace. Not exactly sure which one it is. Yeah, the waiter told us he had an ace, probably ace, king, or ace, queen. Yeah. Um, Chris goes ahead though, and he makes the call. So we're going to the turn now, which is the 10 of diamonds. So Chris and I are heads up now on the turn. He checks it to me. We're about 700 effective. There's probably around- um, 535, I think. 535, so 535 in the pot. So I overbet it a little bit now that I've got a double gutter to go along with the straight flush draw. Yeah, I go all in for about 700. I think I got Chris covered and uh, he snap calls. So I know I'm in bad shape at this point. Um, go ahead and turn our hands over. Uh, neither of us remembered to say anything about like running it twice, but we both totally would have for like this almost two, 2K pot, but I ended up just hitting a five of spades on the river. So yeah, yeah. it came through one time. Double gutter and flush draw gets there. Uh, fun play, fun play. Pretty sick seeing the black five peel. I was like, no heart, <laughs> and then realized I was still beat. Oh man, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I had ace four for two pair. I don't know if we've mentioned that already or not. Oh yeah. But um, that, that got us started, stuck a thousand. Um, and then Paul continued to run it up, and I got stuck another 500, got into the game for 2600 before finally turning it around for pretty much break even by the end of the night. Um, it's a nice little turnaround. And uh, I think Paul's session was a little swingy at the end. Yeah, yeah. I think I was up like 11 or 12 or something and just ended up bleeding it away to like to where I ended up up 150, so. Overall, a fun night. Had some shots, uh, played some cards, played No Limit and PLO. Played quite a few hands of PLO. We, we did one hand per round and then turned it into two hands per round um, and then at the end ended up playing full rounds of PLO so yeah. pretty fun got some good practice in there not nearly as comfortable at PLO as I am at no limit especially playing that deep but uh, it was fun all right me and Jack are out here disc golfing we just finished up the course and we ended up on top of this little mountain no, mountain's a strong word. On top of this little hill here in Waco. It's a mountain. It's a mountain, okay. Fair enough. And Jack is about to try and throw a disc off of the top all the way across this river to a basket that is way down there on the other side. It's a little windy. It is a little windy. Give it a shot. Yep. golfing this afternoon we're out here in Waco and we made it to the top of the closest thing that you can say to a mountain here in Texas um, nice view though really pretty we got like a straight drop-off cliff here pretty good ways down I don't think I'm gonna get too much closer than this uh, we'll have one more hand that I wanted to review for you guys from the home game last night uh, this one we've got three limpers to us and we are on the button straddle uh, so three limpers, and we look down at pocket nines, so we bump it up to $60. Uh, two of the limpers call, and one of them folds. So the pot is about $200 going to the flop with two limp callers, and then us as the aggressor on the button with pocket nines. Uh, the flop comes down two, three, six, all diamonds. So pretty similar to the last hand that we played, almost exactly the same flop. Uh, no ace this time, but all small cards, all diamonds. Uh, it checks to us, and we continue for 125 into 200. Uh, the first limp caller folds, and the second one check calls. Uh, we're off to a turn. Uh, the turn is the eight of spades, and the pot is now about 450. 
he checks to us again and we're definitely continuing here uh, we bet 250 into about 450 the villain in the hand is very loose a recreational player uh, he's going to be calling us down probably with even single pairs i don't even know if he'll fold a hand like six seven uh a six here he's definitely calling with a big diamond uh, we have no diamonds in our hand unfortunately uh, so uh, we're we're just going to continue and hope that no diamond peels off on the river uh, we bet 125 i'm sorry we bet 250 and he makes the call uh, the pot is 950 now and the river is the nine of diamonds so it gives us top set but of course now it's a uh, four to a flush so i think that there's a pretty good chance that he has a diamond uh, we're never really getting any value i think that if he had a worse set which is maybe the only hand that he would call with here uh, if we value bet he would have raised us previously in the hand uh, so no reason to bet for value uh, i don't really think it's a good spot to turn into a bluff either because most of his continuing range on the flop and turn uh, either contains uh, big diamonds or we're already ahead of those hands uh, so it doesn't really make any sense to bet as a bluff or for value so we just check it back and hope top set is good uh, we flip it over and he shows us pocket fours with the four of diamonds so he limp called flopped a gut shot with the diamond draw check calls uh, check calls again and then gets there with the diamond and he's good and we lose another $950 pot. So sad day for us and our sets. Shame.